What's going on guys? Sharpshot here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So today's video, we're going to be doing a killer tier list, including all of the killers up to the night, which was just introduced in the 6.4.0 update. I last made this video in 5.4.0, which was exactly a year ago. And since then, four new killers and a bunch of nerfs and buffs to all the killers in DVD have released. So before we get into the rankings, I just want to give some list conditions and some criteria, just so you guys know how this is going to be ranked starting with s tier these are going to be the best killers or those who are easiest to win games and get 4ks with and going down to d tier these are going to be the worst killers or those who are hardest to win games and get 4ks with and i just want to note that all of the killers in dvd are capable of getting 4ks and doing really good in trials so even if a killer is in d tier it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad there's three main pieces of criteria that i'm going to be used to rank each killer i'm first going to assume that these killers are playing against high mmr survival survivors which are survivors with the skill set of an old red rank slash purple rank player and these survivors know how to loop and how to play against every killer and they also know when it's time to do gens or unhook or heal but with that being said they aren't rank one gods that make the perfect decision every time and they still make mistakes in looping and decision making and i'm also going to assume that the killer is being played at a high mmr skill meaning that the player knows how to play killer in general and how to gen patrol when to chase or when not to chase and they also know how to use that specific killer power properly but with that being said they aren't rank one gods and still do also make mistakes in decision making and mechanics as well and i'm also going to assume that these rankings are not map dependent or add-on dependent because some killers get carried by these two things and being way better on some maps or being way better with some add-ons so i'm just going to average it out and say you're playing on random maps and using an assortment of all of the add-ons that the killer has at their disposal so yeah without further ado let's get right into the video this comes at no surprise but the first killer in s tier and the best killer in dvd is going to be the nurse the nurse can blink through objects meaning she has really great map movement being able to go up and down floors or being able to blink through buildings and tiles which also means that she's practically impossible to loop because she can blink right through pallets and windows and she can catch up to survivors really quickly if they just w key and she can also also afford to make some mistakes with her blinks because she has two of them you just use your first blink to where you last on the survivor and use your second blink to go to where the survivor actually is next you're basically going to be unstoppable the second killer in s tier is going to be blight blight has really good map movement with his rushes and since he's so fast it also means that he can end chases really fast as well because survivors dropping pallets or vaulting windows against you you can just bump around those really quickly and if a survivor does decide to w key you can also catch up to them really fast with the rushes and not to mention mid chase if you're bumping and you have good mind games it's also really hard to dodge and predict where the blight is going to bump to next and because the blight has five rush tokens at base this means he can also afford to make mistakes with his rushes because if you mess up a bump you just bump again and really easily make up for lost distance because he moves so fast the third killer we have in s tier is going to be hag hag has multiple ways and strategies to play as her and all these strategies end up very difficult to counter and end up in her having really good map movement and map control with having 10 traps at base you can really easily lock down an area for example a hook basement exit gates and best of all a three gen late game so that survivors will be able to complete the last gen and you can also place your traps mid chase to lock down loops that's being used to sandwich the survivor between you and a trap so that wherever the survivor goes in a loop you'll be there to hit them moving down to the a tier the first killer we have on here is Oni. Oni has the biggest snowball potential out of any killer in DVD because once he keeps injuring survivors, he'll keep getting his main power more and more. And the main power that you do get with the Blood Fury is a very strong combo of a one-shot power with very fast map movement. Anywhere survivors go while you're in your Blood Fury, you can catch up to them with the Demon Dash. And whether they're healthy or injured, you can down them very easily with the Demon Strike. And you can be very slow at the start with gaining Blood Orbs, but with the right perk setup and add-on set up this could be no problem and once you get that solved and you're able to get your power by end game you're going to be almost always inside of your blood fury and you're going to be very dominant the next killer we have on a tier is going to be spirit spirit is insane mind games she can use inside of her phase walk which make it really difficult to loop as a survivor and make it so that as spirit you basically control the loop and what survivors do and if the survivor does try and run away from a loop you move very quickly in your phase walk so it's easy to catch up to survive 
drivers and you also have fast movement outside of chases to get around the map very quickly and even though she did get nerfed so you can hear a directional phase walk you can actually use that to your advantage as spirit and trick the survivors into thinking they hear you on one side of a loop for example when in reality you just go around the other side of the loop and you can down them very easily the next healer we have on a tier is going to be artist artist can completely lock down loops with her crows all you have to do is just set it up at a pallet and sandwich the survivor in between the crow and you and you basically got yourself a guaranteed injury and you can get easy information anywhere around the map by just sending crows to whatever location you want to see if survivors are at and you can even slow down gen progression very easily by just simply sending crows to the gens where you know survivors are working on and if the survivors are stubborn enough to keep working on it you can punish them by sending another crow injuring them on that gen the next killer we have on a tier is going to be wesker wesker is very good mobility in chases and you can catch up to survivors very quickly being able to vault very quickly through pallets and windows with his violent bound and this makes it so that he's really strong in longer loops which some killers might struggle at like killer shack and once you do actually hit a survivor with your violent bound and you infect them they get slowed down and once they're fully infected they're extremely slow and they're also prone to being insta pick up if you hit them again with your violent bound which makes it so that if a survivor does get fully infected in a chase no matter what the chase is basically over because they're going to be too slow to do anything and a nice little bonus is that if you do slam a survivor into another survivor with your violent bound they're both going to be injured so you're able to kill two birds with one stone and essentially hit two survivors with one hit the next killer in a tier is going to be huntress huntress is a very simple killer with just hatchets but if you're accurate you are basically unstoppable she's strongest when you use mind games in short loops and hit close range hatchets because you'll be able to hit those a lot easier because as a survivor they're very difficult to dodge and she does have a crazy long range with those hatchets so every once in a while you are able to get some crazy snipes and also stop gens from getting worked on by just aiming at the gens and you're able to get guaranteed hits on survivors if they vault a window or pre-drop a pallet in a chase and you're close behind them which makes it really strong and makes survivors think twice about how to actually loop something if they can't pre-drop a pallet or vault a window if you're close behind them the next killer we have in a tier is going to be plague plague can really easily passively infect and injure survivors either by directly throwing up on survivors with their green throw up or by throwing up on any object that you know survivors are going to interact with speaking of this survivors can actually infect themselves for example if survivor is infected and they start working on a gen that gen will then become infected and if uninfected survivor starts working on that gen they're gonna get infected as well and these infected survivors once they're injured they can't heal themselves which will either force them to stay infected and you can one shot down them with your m1 or if they cleanse you'll be able to get your corrupt purge which is basically a long ranged and spread out m1 that is basically impossible to dodge so it's very strong if some survivors cleanse and some survivors stay infected and if you chase the infected survivors with this it'll basically be like a one shot power the next we have an a tier is going to be pyramid head pyramid head has a ton of powers but his best one is definitely his sword swipe or punishment of the damned being that it's a very long range m1 that can go through objects making it so that's very tough to loop pyramid head around a regular tile loop or pallet and by leaving behind a trail and tormenting survivors that run through it you can also cage survivors which is very strong in saving you time from having to actually go to a hook to hook a survivor and it also counters a bunch of meta perks like off the record DS, borrow time, and this isn't a perk, but it also counters flashlight saves. When someone actually does get rescued by a cage, they're very easily prone to being tunneled because most importantly, they won't have base kit BT to save them. So it can be pretty toxic, but you can basically proxy camp and tunnel survivors that are caged, but I wouldn't recommend this because that's just really mean. Moving on to B tier, the first kill we have on here is going to be Bubba. With Bubba's chainsaw, you're able to down survivors very easily and very quickly in dead zones where there's nothing to loop around which means he can also end chases very quickly from survivors in between one loop to another in chase he can also mind game and force survivors to pre-drop pallets which can be very punishing in late game when the survivors find out that there is no more loops with pallets left but you got to be careful on pallets because you still can get pallet stunned mid sweep so a small tip would be to pretend as if you're going in to get pallet stunned and then back up right away and then you can just go right back in and then just chainsaw the pallet really quickly 
chain and you can also down multiple survivors in one chainsaw sweep so in an end game situation where you're camping a hook basically nobody will be able to rescue them or if you catch multiple survivors off guard on a gen you can down multiple there too next killer we have on our b tier is going to be demogorgon demogorgon has a shred attack that you can use in chases which end up being a very powerful long range m1 attack that can break pallets really fast as well and allow you to catch up in chases really easily and if you place him properly his portals will allow you to get easy map movement and map control but you have to be careful because once you place down a portal you can't pick it back up unless it gets cleansed so always make sure that the portals you place they are good even till end game and if you do place portals properly you're going to be able to lock down and pressure areas very easily whether that be pressuring gens or pressuring hooks the next healer we have in b tier is going to be the knight i'm cautiously placing him in b tier because i feel that his guards are able to very easily lock down any loop because you're able to easily sandwich a survivor between you and a guard and in the ptp it was a little bit wonky sometimes because the ai's movement for the guards is unpredictable so sometimes you have to play around the guards a little bit and go on the opposite side of the loop they did which can mess things up but if it gets more consistent after the live launch then it'll be very strong and a small bonus is that if you are chasing a survivor with a guard if you allow the guard to hit the survivor first and you're right behind the survivor you can also practically one shot down them when you hit them after the guard because it'll be like a double hit and you're also able to get easy gen and hook pressure with your guards for example you could just send a guard out to a gen to kick it and you can send out a guard to patrol an area right next to the hook and you can also use your guards as info if you just send them out really far away and then just forget about them and you can also use them for easy cleanup on breaking pallets and gens and breakable walls which can save you time and not have you do that yourself the next killer we have in our b tier is the twins the twins have a really good combo of fast map movement with victor and map control slash lockdown with charlotte where you could plant charlotte in one area and victor could just fly around the rest of the map and you basically just have map wide control and victor also does have snowball potential if you can keep the survivors injured and victor being able to just go on a rampage and just down survivors left and right but with circle of healing now being in the game it's very difficult to keep the survivors injured so it's gonna be pretty tough to do that sometimes and this doesn't really pertain to 6.4.0 but in future updates when basically unbreakable is going to be available twins is going to be a lot worse because she relies on slugging very heavily the next killer we have on b tier is pinhead pinhead can very easily lock down loops with short range chain hits and then following up those chain hits with an m1 but you have to be careful because if you do miss a chain it can be very easily punished by just w keying it away from the loop but he can also massively slow down gen progress with his cubes and his chain hunt because as long as the chain hunt is active you're practically not able to work on gens and you can also initiate more and more chain hunts with certain perk setups and builds and also if you know the general spawns and the mechanics of where the box is you can also teleport to queues when they're getting worked on to just guarantee you a free chase and hopefully a free down if you do really well because you spawn so close to them the next killer is going to be in b tier is going to be death slinger death slinger can lock down most small loops as long as you have a line of sight on the survivor being able to easily shoot survivors over pallets and windows which is a really strong part of his power because you can actually injure survivors beyond pallets and windows by just breaking your chain once you hit them and you can even go further on a window by being able to m1 them if you reel them close enough to the edge of the window but similar to huntress he's only as strong as how many shots you can hit so he is a relatively slow and immobile character so if you do miss shots a lot he'd be punished very easily the next killer is going to be b tier is going to be billy billy's glory days are unfortunately not here but in a dead zone you can easily back rev with your chainsaw to get an easy guaranteed one shot down and using your chainsaw outside of chases you also have really fast map movement and map control being able to press your gens all over the map whenever you want to and although one shot curves are really powerful they're extremely difficult to pull off so the majority of people are not able to do this consistently but if you are he's unstoppable the next killer in b tier is going to be nemesis nemesis's tentacle strike can definitely have snowball potential once it reaches tier three but you actually have to be able to hit your tentacle strike very often because early game you're only gonna be at tier one and tier two so it can definitely be punished if survivors dodge the tentacle strikes also being that it's a three hit if you only use tentacle strikes but tentacle strikes and chases are very strong because they can hit survivors over pallets over windows and 
and even over small short objects which you make some moves basically unmovable because you can hit the survivor over any part of it and you also even break pallets very fast once you get to tier two which makes pallets basically useless to survivors and the zombies may be passive but they also give you good information they can give you good gen pressure and if you're lucky enough to be looping near a zombie you can sandwich the survivor in between you and the zombie and to clarify zombies give information in knowing where survivors are because if a zombie's arms are up that means they're chasing a survivor moving on to the c tier the first killer we have on here is the dredge being able to teleport through multiple lockers he has really fast map movement and can get good information out of these teleports and this can be increased even more with the nightfall being able to teleport even faster and more often he can also lock down loops with his remnant and mind gaming it and placing it down and trying to sandwich the survivor between you and the remnant and being able to teleport through lockers you can teleport to those near gens to apply easy gen pressure but this can be countered by the survivors just locking the lockers pretty easily and ruining your element of surprise the next killer in c tier is going to be the doctor with his shock therapy he's easily able to lock down moves and not allowing survivors to vault windows and pallets and drop pallets and with his static blast he can also get easy information on the whereabouts of survivors but the madness effects that you apply on survivors through that shock therapy and static blast aren't very useful other than maybe slowing down the game once the survivors do get to tier 3 madness by them having to cleanse out of it the next killer we have on c tier is clown clown can lock down loose with his pink bottles and the common counter of this is to pre-drop pallets and just lead the loops so if you do get rid of the pallets around the map late game you're going to be able to get some really easy downs with survivors not having any pallets to safely loop around and with his yellow bottles he has semi-fast movement around the map and you also use them to catch up to survivors in a chase but you have to be careful where you place them and not to use them really mid loop because survivors can also gain the speed advantage from these bottles and his big problem in looping is that even if a survivor is intoxicated by a pink bottle they can still vault windows pallets and drop pallets so this can be pretty punishing in a loop with a lot of pallets and windows the next killer in c tier is going to be lesion lesion can apply constant gen pressure with his feral frenzy enforcing the survivors to get off gens and with his feral frenzy it'll keep the survivors constantly injured in the trial if you're doing a good job at tracking survivors and in doing this with a proper perk build survivors will be forced to heal which will slow down gen progress but if the survivors refuse to heal and they just stay injured the feral frenzy will be basically useless because you'll just be applying mended which will only stop gen progress for maybe like 10 seconds or so and the big issue with lesion is that he injures really easily but he, it's not so easy to down the survivors because like i said you only apply mended with the feral frenzy if you hit an injured survivor and getting that fifth hit feral frenzy instant down is pretty rare so if you want to down a survivor you're gonna have to brute force your way into m1ing a down which could end up taking a lot of time the next killer in c tier is going to be ghost phase if you 99 your stock meter on a survivor and you sneak up really close to them and then pop the expose you're going to be able to get guaranteed insta downs and with a buff that ghost phase recently received his expose timer is a lot longer which will make it so that even if you stalk a group of survivors at the same time you might actually have time to down multiple exposed survivors if they're close together and ghost phase's big problem is that as a survivor you can just simply look at ghost phase and reveal him which will cancel his stock and get him out of his power which will actually punish you pretty heavily so you're gonna need to stay really stealthy and play really smart so that that doesn't happen which can sometimes be very difficult the next killer on c tier is gonna be wraith when he's cloaked he has really fast map movement and easy gen pressure being able to kick gens faster along with pallets and breakable walls you can also lock down loops when you're cloaked by body blocking survivors from vaulting windows or pallets or dropping pallets but outside of this his invisibility while being cloaked isn't useful at all and it doesn't really catch survivors off guard or by surprise moving down to the d tier the first killer we have on here is gonna be trickster once you do build up his main event which can sometimes take a little bit of time to do it's basically a guaranteed down although it can get multiple downs if survivors are clumped up to each other don't hold on to the main event for too long and just use it whenever you can get a guaranteed down and you'll get a lot more value and a lot more main events throughout the trial and he does have long range potential with his knives like huntress would with her hatchets but the only problem is that the accuracy fall off at long range is really big and because you need to hit so many knives to actually fully injure a survivor 
over you're gonna need to be even more accurate than you would have trying to just hit one hatchet with huntress so it can be pretty difficult and in general hitting knives is a lot more difficult than hitting hatchets because a simple object that you can't hit a knife around is gonna punish you super hard so chases do end up taking longer and if you do end up in a chase where you don't hit the survivor at all and you're gonna have to worry about the laceration meter cooldown which is a very big issue the next killer in d tier is gonna be freddy freddy is good map movement and gen pressure with his dream projection and you can also lock down moves with your dream snares and fake dream pallets but both of those can be punished fairly easily because the dream snares don't slow down the survivors by that much and survivors can just simply pay attention to what are fake pallets and just not loop around them and the big problem with freddy is actually keeping the survivors in the dream world and that's kind of difficult to do so because there's so many ways for survivors to get out of it and outside of the dream world if you're in a chase with them you're basically just an m1 killer because they don't see the dream snares or the dream pallets that you've placed down which makes you pretty weak in a chase against these survivors the next killer in d tier is gonna be myers like ghostface if you 99 your stock meter and go up close to a survivor catch them by surprise you can get a guaranteed one shot down with your exposed and although his exposed definitely has snowball potential late game he's super slow in early game trying to get from tier one all the way up to tier three versus only having to go from tier two to tier three late game so you have very little room for error at the start of the match and if you can take advantage of a survivor mistake of just not noticing when you're stalking that could be the whole difference in the trial but the main problem with myers is that it takes too long to build up his power and once you do get his exposed it lasts for too little time without add-ons so it's pretty easy to counter on the survivor side by just hiding whatever he is in his exposed the next killer in d tier is going to be pig reverse bear traps can greatly slow down gem progress and can sometimes even lead to rng kills if the survivors get unlucky and in a chase you can mind game with your ambush and land a potentially pretty easy hit but these mind games are actually fairly easy to counter by just staying on the opposite side of the loop and although the reverse bear trap rng did get more consistent you actually need to down survivors in order to put the traps on their head and to do that all you have to your disposal is a pretty weak crouch and ambush mechanic so it can sometimes be pretty difficult to get that first down and get the ball rolling with the traps the next killer we have on d tier is trapper trapper can lock down short loops and small areas like the killer shack with his traps if you place them in really smart areas where survivors won't expect them but the problem with the traps is that they're so easy to spot and they take so long to place down because you can carry so little of them and outside of the traps you literally are only an m1 killer so in a chase if you don't have any traps you literally can't do anything but m1 so you're gonna be very weak in chases finally the worst killer in dvd i think is onryo onryo has good map movement with her tvs but the problem is is that the tvs are in select locations so she doesn't have immediate access to gen pressure or hooks and if the tvs are turned off she simply just can't teleport to certain areas which is a very easy counter for survivors and your condemned power is basically useless and pressuring survivors into getting more condemned stacks takes so long it's not even worth it to try and do it'll be extremely rare that a survivor gets all the way to the seven stacks you need to get exposed and inside chases she has no anti-loop but she's just basically an m1 killer so it'll also be very difficult to loop survivors so yeah guys that was the killer tier list for 6.4.0 let me know in the comments what you guys think about my tier list and what would you change about it but please keep it civil i know you guys have your preferences for killers but don't flame me too hard <laughs> so yeah guys thank you guys so much for watching leave okay. a like and subscribe if you're new this has been sharp shot and i will see you guys in the next video